If you wanna start a dog training business, there's a few things that you need to know. Today, we're gonna to go over the 10 steps in order to build a dog training business that's successful, profitable, and gives you freedom to live your life exactly how you want. Stay until the end of the video, and I'm actually gonna give you a tool so that you can get started with confidence. Let's jump right into it. Step number one, get some experience. You don't have to have a boatload of experience. You just need some. You need something to substantiate your claim that you are a professional dog trainer. Do you need certifications? No, not yet. We'll talk about that later. Now, you can go to certain places. You can work at a rescue. You can work with friends and family's dog. All you really need to do right now is get some experience. If you have your own dog, something that I did not when I started thinking about becoming a dog trainer, you have the opportunity to train that dog so beautifully, so perfectly, that people will start asking you if you train dogs. I have seen it happen time and time again. It's one of the best ways to get into training dogs professionally. Work with as many dogs as you possibly can. All the dogs you can get your hands on, which means don't just volunteer at one rescue, volunteer at five. Don't just get a job training dogs at a facility one time, do it many times. Find the highest like volume of dogs you can find and train all of them and work with as many different dogs as you can. If you've already worked with 10 golden retrievers, unless you really wanna work with more golden retrievers, find another breed. Get to the point where people don't believe how many dogs you've trained. I've trained over 12,000 different dogs. I've done a lot of work, like 16, 17, 18 hour days for weeks and months on end to train as many dogs as I have. Number three, start training family and friends dogs in a structured way. So you ask your friends, you ask your family, hey, I'm thinking of starting a dog training business. I'd actually like to train your dogs for free and see if my training theories and methods work. I'd love to coach you through it. I'd love to teach you about it. Is that something you'd be open to? Some people are gonna say no. Some people are gonna say, oh my God, yes, my dog is like destroying my house, please. Then you have the opportunity to have one, success stories, and two, more experience, and three, validate your idea. And that brings us to number four. After friends and family and like that close group, you're gonna to wanna to start charging for your training. That's your test group. That's your validation group. That's your referral group. They get it for free. Now, when you start talking to new people, you have the confidence that you've helped those people, you can definitely help this person, they should give you money. You are worth a lot now. People are gonna be mad no matter what price you give them. So pick the price that works for you, your lifestyle, and your business. There are people who will think it's a steal, it's a gold mine, oh my gosh, that's a discount. The guy down the street's charging $15,000 for five minutes. Like, pick a price and then be solid on that price. Don't give away, this is a little side bonus tip, don't discount your prices. If it's $2,000 to work with you, it's $2,000 to work with you. If someone has a problem with that price, they can either go somewhere else or you can give them a bonus. Hey, I have no problem giving you more, but I can't go lower than 2000, that's my price. Step number five, create a formal offer. What I mean by formal offer to sell is you're gonna change, charge different prices for different problems. So if someone has a loose leash walking problem and a barking at strangers problem, those are two different problems that require different time, different energy, a different skill set. So if they're walking their dog and you can help them with that, cool, that's a hundred bucks. If they're barking at strangers and reactive, they might not know that term, but if they're reactive and they're barking at some people and they're like freaking out, then that might be 400 bucks an hour because there's so much more that goes into that training than a hundred bucks. See the difference? So that's your formal. You're gonna create this stack of offers that you have and the problems that you can solve for people and you're gonna have them separate. That's step number five. Step number six is get certified to boost your authority. You already have some success stories. And some people, that, that's literally all they do. Get more success stories and sell those success stories. They have no certifications, no uh, like education, background, nothing. They've just trained a lot of dogs. And when you're starting out, a lot of people are gonna fight you. You're gonna say, well, I saw on TV, I saw on YouTube, this guy said to do this thing on TikTok. And you're gonna say, there's reasons to do those things. Sometimes there isn't, but there might be reasons to do those things, but that's not how we're gonna do it today. I can say I'm an animal scientist. 
That's because I have a Bachelor of Technology degree in Animal Science with a concentration in canine management and training techniques. Yes, it's a long title, but if someone says, what's your certification? I can tell them an animal scientist, I understand canines at a deeper level than your average dog trainer. If you don't have an accreditation, if you don't have anything, a certification whatsoever, then you don't have an authority to stand on when someone challenges you. Number seven, raise your prices. Why is it always about prices, Michael? I just got into an argument the other day with a trainer about this very particular topic. They think that they should be giving away their training for free. And that's totally fine. There's people out there that are doing that. But if you're trying to start a dog training business, you need money to operate the business. You cannot help more people if you do not have more money to help more people. And when you're getting started, your heart is in the right place. I feel you. I've had so many trainers who their heart is in the right place, but they can't make enough money to give away free stuff. They can't spend the time on free classes. They can't spend the time on free content creation like YouTube. They can't spend the time giving away free sessions because they are living paycheck to paycheck or below. If they had all the money in the world, they could give away free courses. They could give away free training. They could do a whole month free because they'd have so much money it wouldn't matter to them. Be the most expensive in the area. You're gonna have better clients that are more serious and actually take the training well. There are multiple facets into why you should have higher prices. So trust me when I say, because it's worked every time with every trainer I've ever worked with and myself in my own business. Raise your prices beyond what you think makes sense and then make sense of it by providing more for your client, not less. Number eight, look for more clients now that you've exhausted your list of family, friends, and their extended families. Look for clients in these places. The dog park is great. That's where most people who've given up on their dog go. Why do I know this? Because I did it. I'd go to the dog park, I'd stand outside, and I'd say, hey, free dog training, trying to drum up some business. Or hey, discounted dog training, again, trying to drum up some business. What ends up happening is everybody who's in the dog park doesn't care because their dog's getting tired at the dog park. They go home, they don't have any problems because their dog is tired. Cool, whoopo for them. The other side of the fence is that you have puppies and people who are bringing their dog there for the first time and they don't know what to do with their out of control dog. And so you might be the perfect person for them if you're standing outside the dog park. But odds are they just spent $3,000 on a new brand new purebred puppy and they don't have money to give you. Okay, so that doesn't work, does it, right? So here's what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna go talk to vets, you're gonna talk to rescues, you're gonna talk to breeders, and you're gonna make relationships with those three people first. Vets, rescues, and breeders. Your specialty might be puppy training. Cool, breeders are the best place to go. Your you know, specialty might be reactivity or multi-dog households. So if a vet knows someone with two dogs in one household, you're gonna be called first. If a rescue has two dogs that have to live together or somebody wants to get another dog and they already have a dog, they might reach out to you first and say, hey, can you do an assessment and see if this is a good fit? So you're gonna make those connections first. Then outside of that, you go to every business imaginable. Did you hear me? Every business imaginable. Barbershops, salons, banks, Walmart employees, everybody you can talk to. Just bring it up that you're a dog trainer. Wear a shirt that says professional dog trainer, ask me questions. The more people you talk to, most people have dogs, the more potential clients you're going to get. So you gotta to talk to more people. But don't get stuck into this box that says, I have to talk with people that have dogs. No, talk to everybody, because everybody has a dog or knows someone who has a dog. You can go to everywhere else that all the other dog trainers are not going to and take their business. Number nine, make connections with other dog trainers in the area. So if your specialty is puppies and someone else's specialty is adolescence, right? Like a two to three year old dog that's lost their mind and is going crazy, then you guys partner up. And if someone reaches out to them and it's a puppy, they'll send them to you. And after your puppy training, you can send your dogs over to there because you just want to focus on puppies. And it is a wonderful opportunity for you to get more clients without doing more work, but also provide more value for the clients you already have. Number 10 is what everybody starts with, and I, I don't really know why. Besides the certification and getting certified, everybody starts with number 10. Website, branding, logo, business name can wait. All of that can wait. 
if you do not have proof of concept, money coming in, a like system to train, certifications, experience, reviews, if you don't have any of that, don't worry about the website. No one's going to see it anyway. Don't worry about the logo. No one's going to see it. Don't worry about the brand name. People should have your phone number and be able to call you or text you. They don't need to look up your brand online. So there's some questions that I constantly get asked that these steps did not answer. And so I wanna answer them really quickly. The top three, number one, should you have insurance? Yes, you should have insurance in your business as business insurance and liability insurance in case anything happened, especially if you're doing a board and train type of thing, you should have insurance for you, the dogs, everybody involved. Number two, when do I offer more services? Never offer different services. If you do group classes on obedience, don't offer reactivity private session. Doesn't make sense. If you're an obedience expert, offer obedient private sessions to get people into the classes. If you're a fitness expert, you help dogs be athletic and fit and so they can do more, then don't offer puppy classes unless it has to do with fitness then you can offer different services. And you do that when your system is so perfect, there's nothing more you could do, right? So you do better and you do more of it, and then eventually you do something new. And that's gonna be the new service, but it perfectly lines up with your previous service. And it should feed the other services. So if someone's in a group class and they're not doing well, maybe you pull them out and do private sessions. If they've done private sessions, they're doing really well, you put them into a group class. What should your prices be? Where should you start? Kind of mentioned it a little earlier. Start pretty low and build every few clients or so. Just double it, double it, double it, double it until people say no to you. I always suggest people to just double their rates right out of the gates after we talk. I'm like, hey, whatever your price is, just double it. You'll see what happens. If you got value out of this video, then I want to give you a free gift if you've made it this far because it has been a long one. It is my five page business plan to start and operating your dog training business. All you got to do is click the link down into the description. I'll give it to you 100% free. Just go there at caninebusinessbuilder.com forward slash five page business plan. Again, the link is down in the description below. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have other questions, put it in the comment. Let me know and I'll see you in the next one.